Hi, my name is Ed Clark and I'm an apprentice smith with the American Bladesmith Society. Today I'd like to share with you the jig I use to heat treat my blades. First I'd like to take a second to talk about shop safety. Make sure you always wear your safety glasses, hearing protection, and breathing apparatus whenever you're doing the appropriate types of work, grinding or anything in the shop with the safety glasses. Proper heat treating is a factor of temperature, time, and control. And if you're lucky enough to have a heat treating oven, well then you've got things covered. But if you're not, if you can't afford one, or you just don't have the space for it, you can always just use the jig like I use. It's a very simple jig. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of practice to use. And uh, let's take a look at it. It's an inch and a half diameter black iron pipe. It's that simple. Put it in the uh, coal. I use a coal forge because I get a little more control over what I'm doing than I do with my particular propane forge. Let's see how it works. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm using a test piece of steel. I don't want any scale on my knife if I've already ground it. So I'm using a test piece. This piece is not magnetic at this point. We scaled a little bit. We're probably a little hot. So I'll turn down my boiler a little and check it again. And when I'm satisfied with how hot it is and how it's holding the temperature, there's your time and temperature factors, then I'll move on to my knife which I don't want to ruin. Alright, I start with the handle end first because I want to make sure that I get the blade the best. I'll flip it around. I can actually heat this whole blade in here, but I'm choosing to show you the options if you have a longer piece. Once we get the whole blade to temperature, we'll be able to let it cool down, finish that normalizing cycle. Sometimes you move it in and out just to keep it real even, but this, this keeps your heat a lot more even than you could do if you're in a coal forge or a propane forge without the pipe helping. Okay, so I'm moving it back and forth just to make sure I get a more even temperature. This back end is cooled off a bit because of my tongs, but you can see we've got a good even color. A little bit of scale, not too much. We'll let that cool down, normalize, go through two more cycles, and then we'll go to our kneeling phase. Okay, so a couple more points. The back end of the pipe, the far end, I keep covered with coal. It allows it to breathe, but it holds in the heat and makes the oven effect longer throughout the pipe, so you can do it for a longer piece. Also, I've also got a piece of steel with a cut opening in it that I'll put on the closer end. I don't want to seal it off completely, but then I can elongate that heat effect even farther. But for the purposes of the video, I just wanted to show you how simple it is and how it works. Make sure you're placing the blade edge up if your heat source is underneath. And if it's coming from the top or the side in a propane forge, you want to try and put the thickest part of the blade towards that heated area or turn the pipe. This will work in a propane forge as well. I just happen to like the coal forge for heat treating. My next video I'm going to put out is about making these tongs. They're excellent tongs for a bladesmith. You can put a piece of steel in here and it's not going anywhere. No matter how hard you hit it. And you can adjust them very quickly by heating them up and tapping them with the hammer to fit different thicknesses of steel. And since you make them yourself, you burn them up, you make another pair pretty quick. Thanks a lot. Once again, I'm Ed Clark with the American Bladesmith Society. It's a good organization. I recommend anyone that's not joined, join up. And I hope to see you at one of the hammerheads.